In this video, I'm going to show you all you need to know about straps and strap locks. Hey guys, I'm Tyler. Thank you for tuning back in to the channel. If you're new around here, consider hitting that like button and subscribing. So this video is a little bit different. I've never done a video on accessories like this. I've done cable videos, but no accessories that don't have any sound involved. So it's a, a new venture for the channel, but I thought it's something that's important and it was something that a subscriber suggested last week on the Warwick Starbase video. So Sunday Driver was the user who asked if I could talk about straps. He had a, a couple of problems from playing contact sport in his youth and he just started playing the bass and was wondering what he could do about straps to prevent pain after half an hour of playing. And I figured that I was fairly well qualified to talk about this given that I have all these and a few more. So in doing this I've learned that I've got too many straps at the very least. What I'm going to do in this video is talk about the things I look for when I look for a strap and maybe you might want to look for too. And then just run through a few different types of strap because there are broadly a few different types that are the same um, when you're looking for a strap and just point those different types and features out to you so that when you are choosing a strap you can make a better informed decision. In addition to talking about straps, I'm also going to talk about strap locks. I use these all the time and gig them. Really important piece of kit for me as a regularly gigging musician. So I'm going to run you through the different types of strap locks you can get on the market. I've got a few different ones here. And just show you the features of each and then hopefully you'll be well informed when it comes to straps and strap locks by the end of this video. So the first thing we need to look at is what am I looking for when I buy a strap? For me, width is a critical feature. So the width of the strap is really important. The width is what's going to take and bear the weight over your shoulder. And as bass players, we play an instrument that's pretty large in the context of other instruments and can really vary in weight depending on what your bass is made of. For me, I'm going for a width of pretty much three inches at the least. What that means is that when it comes over the shoulder, it's going to sit nicely, it's going to allow a lot of that weight to be distributed across a wider area which is pretty much the critical part when it comes to bearing weight with the base. The second thing I'm going to be considering is the adjustability of the strap. For me it's quite hard to beat an adjuster with this kind of seat belty material because that really allows you to go from you know, really precise measurements between each of the strap positions that you might want. So the adjuster is a, another important feature. Length is another important factor. So I will find often that a short strap is the best choice for bass guitar, sometimes a medium, depending on what type of bass you're playing. If you've got a semi-hollow body or an acoustic bass, you might need a medium or a long strap. But in general, I think long straps are designed for acoustic guitar players and people who are gigantically tall. I'm six foot tall and generally small or medium straps are more than enough, but generally the small ones are better for me. Obviously that also does take into account the playing position, but for me, I like it so that when my strap is over my shoulder, when I stand up, the base is in exactly the same position as when I'm sat down. So when I'm sat down, the shoulder is still bearing a little bit of the weight of the base. It's not just sat on my lap. The base is held close to me from the strap the weight is bare, you know, bears a little bit of the weight, and then if I stand up, it's in exactly the same position as when I'm sat down. The fourth thing to consider when we're talking about straps is the material that it's made of. I like a strap with a little bit of give, so something that's got a little bit of a foamy type material, or this um, kind of neoprene type material, a little bit like the stuff that wetsuits are made from. Um, not only is it pretty durable, but it's also lightweight, and it gives a little bit so when it sits on your shoulder it's going to give and you i can pull down there hopefully you can see there it pulls down there's a little bit of give nice bit of soft comfort for the shoulder and the last thing is how it looks i love straps like this leather straps i think they're super cool and you can get some really cool engravings this one's got my initials on it too which is snazzy um but yeah, that's obviously got to be taken into account. There's definitely straps in here that I've got because they look really cool. So now I've run you through the things we're looking for. I'm gonna look at a few straps and kind of give you my pros and cons of each. If you like a little mini review of each of these strap types and then maybe from these, you'll see what might suit you best. 
So I'm going to start here, which I think is probably one of the best choices, particularly if you've got any sort of back pain. There is another choice that I'll mention that I haven't got, but I'll mention that towards the end of the video. Uh, it's a different product that I think would probably be a really good choice if you suffer with significant back pain. So this is a comfort strap. This is a very thick strap, as you can see, that's probably four inches wide, something like that. It has the adjuster that I said about, which is really important, so we can get into the perfect playing position with that. Going to get a nice amount of balance and a good length. And the material is the neoprene material with this long piece of elastic that also runs down the length of it. Um, and it allows the attachments here where the end of the strap is to just give a little bit so when it is on the shoulder it can just give and you're not stuck with a base that's you know super heavy and really pulling down on the shoulder it just naturally gets into a nice comfortable position I think the comfort strap is a really cool strap hard to beat but it doesn't really look great so it's not a very exciting looking strap and also the durability is a little bit suspect just in places as you can see here there's a few stray bits of elastic floating about but I have had this strap for probably maybe 10 years now so it's still doing a good job this is a really good choice if you have a very heavy base this goes typically on the heaviest base in my collection now I move to something like this this is a Franklin strap quite a long strap for me that's just too long as you can see it's really long and it doesn't have a proper adjuster. You have this leather fastening system where you pull the two pieces of leather through each other and that dictates the length. What it does have is a number of different strap holes, which is nice. However, I don't really like having these multiple strap holes because as soon as you go past one on your base or two, you then have this little bit that's just flapping around just beyond the end of your base and the strap pin so not really a great choice for me and I also find because this strap is so long I'm constantly trying to weave it in and out in really obscure ways just to try and reduce the length of it you know knotting it round itself multiple times so that there's not as much strap and it's more wrapped around the end of the strap itself um, however it is a nice wide strap so that definitely helps but it is just a plain leather strap with a little bit of a suede interior, um, which is nice. One thing I will know is that if you have a leather strap without this suedeiness, quite often it's going to slip. When it comes to leather, this is you want a strap with some kind of suede material underneath to really help it grip on the shoulder. Next, we'll take a look at this strap, which is from the Fender Custom Shop. This is the strap that comes in the case, part of the case candy, if you buy a Custom Shop base. This was from my Precision base, and. It's a bit of a hybrid of the straps that I've described. It's got that same leather feature where there are holes in the leather and you wrap the strap around it and through it, but it also has this adjuster on the end. As you can see, because of its length, I've got it all the way to the end pretty much. If you go any further, it doesn't really hold properly and it rubs against the body of the base. So that's how I have it set. And really not substantial enough for a bass guitar. I have this without any strap locks on it just floating around for if I have a bass into review and want to put a strap on it or whatever but it's not one of the straps that I take out regularly it kind of is a little bit painful with a bass um, digging in there just because of the width of it it doesn't really take the weight across the shoulder it really digs it into there across the neck it's just not very comfortable so I kind of recommend you don't buy a strap with that little width to it it's too thin it's probably only about two maybe two and a half inches it's just not enough for me it needs to be a wider strap and I'd like to have a bit more adjustability however it does have the suede inside which is good um, and it is an all right piece of leather again another fender strap this is another one from the collection again this one doesn't sit on a base regularly it just floats about or sits in the cupboard in case I have another instrument comes through or gets used on guitar or something like that. This has got a plasticky type leather material um, which does slip a bit, not really a fan of that. Um, it does have the cloth look on top which is a cool vintage feature, this is an old strap um, and the simple 
faux leather suede type material ends as well. I wouldn't really recommend this for most bass players. One saving feature of it is it does have a proper adjuster, so you can adjust that all the way along, which is a nice little handy ability. And there's no change in material, so you can really have it any length you want. Now onto the last three, and these are some of my favorite straps, to be honest. This is the Sadowski standard strap. I believe this is the small one, but it might be the medium. I have one of each. And really great strap. Pretty hard wearing, I've had these for a good few years. We have the seatbelt material and adjuster, which is ideal. Then have this nice little rubber um, reinforcement really at the end of the strap, but it also helps it sit on the back and stops it from slipping, which is nice. Then have this neoprene, kind of lightly gel type material, a lot like Neotech straps that saxophone players use, if you've seen those. And um, you can get a base version of that as well. But yeah, you have this gel-like reinforcement around. And as you can see, the strap isn't a uniform width. It widens out over the shoulder. So really well-designed strap, that. Just enhancing the weight distribution over, over the shoulder and then tapering away. I really like the next strap because this is my kind of personalised strap that I was given for one of my birthdays. I believe it's by Barefoot Straps. And has my initials on it and this cool design around the edge. I love a great looking leather strap, there's something really special about it and I, I love leather things in general. It's a nice width so that's really going to help distribute the weight across the shoulder. Things I'm not a massive fan of are the fact it's quite long so again it's too long really. I'd rather this was about 8 inches shorter and as a result I do have it really weirdly stuck through as you can see it's got a little popper which is nice, but I've actually had to shut the popper the other side so it's behind the strap itself when it's the idea is that it sits over the top and wraps around so you put one side through and then attach it with the popper so it holds in place but because of the length I wasn't able to do that so it just sits popped together and it does hold pretty well so that's not really an issue um, but yeah, if it had an adjuster or maybe a little bit of cloth at the end to have the adjuster that would have been a better choice for me. But I still love this strap and use it all the time. Sits on my P-Base and comes out with me on country gigs and just lives on my P-Base. It's pretty cool, old school vintage style. The last strap we have is this, which is the Sadowski leather strap. Made by a company called Roli in Poland. Really classy strap. We have this glove leather feel on the top. Um, this suede accent at the end with the Sadowski logo on it. This lovely suede underneath with a nice amount of padding that really gives a little bit on the shoulder. And this really sweet piece of leather um, through which the strap end attaches. There isn't a choice in size on this, so I would still have had it a little bit shorter if I had the option. Um, as you can see here, again, I've got it wrapped round really weirdly in order to waste some of the strap. So that's normally meant to sit behind here behind here on the strap but I've got it sat at the end however it holds it stays in place and it feels great the way that it sits over the shoulder really beautiful in the way that it does so nice bit of give and surprisingly comfortable given that it's a leather strap rather than one of those modern materials which I've as I've said are really good for distributing weight so those are the straps let me know what you're using in the comments below and let me know which of those was your favorite Generally, as I've said, I wouldn't go for a strap that's any thinner than this strap here, which is probably three, three and a half inches wide. And if you can, make sure you get a little bit of padding in there just to help distribute that weight over the shoulder. So there is one other type of strap which I haven't mentioned, which I don't actually own, but I think it looks like a really good product, and so I will probably try and get hold of one at some point, and that's the Groove Gear Duo Strap. The idea of that strap is that it sits over both shoulders and then takes the front horn here and then you have the second attachment down for the bottom of the base but that's going to distribute the weight really evenly across both shoulders and really centralize where the base sits so if you're really struggling with back pain or something like that definitely consider checking out that and i'll leave a link to their page in the description below i'm not paid for any of this but i just thought it's really important to make sure that you guys are as informed as you can be so as i said it'll be in the description below so that's it for straps if you were just here to find out about straps 
now's the time to leave. Consider hitting that like button and subscribe button. But if you want to stay on for the rest of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about strap blocks briefly. So strap blocks pretty much changed the game for me. Before that, I was having you know a variety of issues with straps dropping off or whatever. I was doing quite lively rock shows when I was a teenager and stuff like that. So I needed strap blocks. Strap blocks just allow me to forget about everything else and just have the bass on me, no worries whatsoever. So there are a few different options I'm going to talk you through. The first one is kind of the king of the hill when it comes to strap blocks. For dairy, use these. MTD are using these strap blocks. There aren't many companies out there that don't use these strap blocks, and that is the Jim Dunlop strap block. These are pretty simple to install. The problem with them is that once it's installed, it's pretty much set for life. So whatever strap you put them on, you need to make sure that you are committed to using that strap regularly with that base. With the Dunlop strap locks, you simply open up the circlet clip and take the washer off, put your strap in between those two, and then attach the circlet back on, and then that's it, locked in forever. And you end up with a strap that looks like this. These are my personal favourite strap lock because they're really easy to get on and off. You simply put the strap over the strap pin, press the button in on the top and it will drop in and lock. In order to get it back out you simply just press the button down and pull it back out. As the Dunlop strap lock sits inside of the strap pin you need to install specific Dunlop strap pins which have the right attachment within them and those come in the set with the lock itself. If you have Dunlop strap locks already and you just want to use the same strap on different bases you can also buy uh, from all parts. They retail just strap pins that have the Dunlop attachment inside them. They're not official but they definitely work and I've used them on a few bases. I've been very happy. Another type of strap lock I have in my arsenal is this which is the Warwick strap lock. These work almost identically to the Dunlops. You simply take the nut off, which makes them a little bit easier to take on and off of bases, but does have the negative side of being more prone to coming loose. So you need to make sure if you use Warwick strap locks, that you regularly make sure that the nut is retightened. And when you first put them on, make sure it's super tight. You take the nut off, take the washer off, put the strap in between, washer back on, nut back on, and then that's it, you're done. Again, like Dunlop strap locks these push into the strap pin so you need to install the Warwick strap pin with them and then push the button to attach, push the button to take it back out. Easy as that. Here we have another contender in the strap lock race which is the Schaller strap lock. With this strap lock you have a nut and washer on top. Again you put the strap inside and then put the washer and nut back on top. And the difference with this strap lock is that you pull. So instead of having a button that you push down you pull this here away to allow the strap lock to release. The other interesting thing about the shallot is that it hooks around the strap button itself. So instead of attaching just into the strap button, it hooks itself around the strap button. So it's supporting some of the weight with this horseshoe shaped attachment on it. I personally don't like these very much. I found them a little bit fiddly to get on and to pull and bring the strap down at the same time, particularly if you're wearing the base, it's quite difficult to do. So that's why the Dunlop strap locks are my preference over these. The Charlotte also has a specific strap pin so that the lever that you pull up and down can lock into it. Last we have these two different types of strap lock. These are both non-permanent fittings. So this is the fender strap lock, really simple little piece of rubber. The way that works is that you put the strap onto the strap pin and then simply attach this rubber over the top of it. Easy as that, done. Strap is locked on. And I actually think these work really effectively. These cost about $4 for two of them. So you're getting a pair of these locks and you can take them on and off. I think after a few too many, you know, if you take them off too many times, they are gonna start not being quite so resilient and, and holding quite as steady. These are actually surprisingly good and hold really well. I used these on tour for a couple of months when all parts didn't have any of the Dunlop pins available and I had an excess of strap locks but no more pin strap pins so I used these and they actually work really well so no hesitation in suggesting those. The other type is this which is a Dunlop strap lock with the same premise so this um, you put the strap underneath onto the strap pin and then you twist this around so 
it's got two different shapes and you twist them until the strap lock is central and that prevents the lock from coming out and the strap from releasing itself. Another really simple piece of kit and even less permanent than the fenders, these are really easy to get on and off. However, I do think that the fenders are a little bit safer. I find that these can, over time, the little piece of plastic inside them can turn away depending on how much you're moving on stage um, and that can be a bit of an issue and they can come loose when you don't expect. So if you're using these make sure you check that they are firmly locked in place. So as I said at the start of this section, the Dunlop is my favourite strap lock by far. You don't have to worry about making sure the nuts are tight and that it's not going to fall off. It's low maintenance and it's really easy to use. You just push that button in, it locks in, pull it out and it's done. And I think the fact that so many builders use them and install them by default on their bases is just a testament to the fact that these are really the best strap lock you can get. They do come with a price premium but I think it's more than worth it. And if you have one Dunlop strap with strap locks, just buying the strap pins from all parts really can sort you out. Again, I'm not paid to say this, just advice that I've found and experienced along the way that saved me a lot of money and works just as well as having bought you know, each of the 18 pound pairs of strap locks and pins. So that's it from me this week. Let me know what you are using in the comments below. I wanna know what type of strap you're using and what type of strap lock is your favorite. If this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button. Hopefully this video is gonna save some of you guys a lot of back pain in the long run and really help you look after yourself, look after your bases and allow you to play in really good, comfortable positions that allow you to get even better in what you do. That's all from me. If there's anything you want to see in the videos going ahead, let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys around soon.